Um, just briefly, uh, some directions I think we need to look at going uh, for the for next year from what we've said so far. And these won't come as a surprise to any of us. I've just pulled out what I think are the, some of the key ideas that we've been talking about. Uh, the first one uh, is the phonological and phonemic knowledge. I think that's really that, that's really critical. Um, the the second, and uh, well, Tracy just mentioned it now, and we've mentioned it earlier today, is is the independent, rapid use of the strategies, the automatised use of the strategies. Well, what what, what we've got to work on. Well, one thing I've got to think I need to work on more, and we, we need to discuss, Lena, is what that looks like. How do you tell where the students are in terms of doing it? Because if we, if we don't get the strategies going automatically, the kids are not going to carry them away from your, you know, from your teaching. So we really need to target that. The third, we need to really work get the oral language knowledge built up. You know, the oral language in sentences built up. So if they see the, uh, the word... Uh, uh, oxen and they're learning about it that, that oxen is a growth hormone that is linked with the sun you know is, is, you know, con you know determines the direction in which the plant grows you now things like that that they can say these things in sentences so I, I think we do need to work on improving the children's grammar mm -hmm. and if we can throughout the region can really get the children even talking more and more in sentences. I think that's been a real achievement over the last two years. That, that we've really, we, uh, from when we started and I first visited schools, we didn't see it nearly so much. The unit of meaning in a text is the sentence and we've really, we've really got to work on that. Uh, we've had some fantastic uh, displays today of clear, explicit professional learning programs and, and uh, implementation plans. You don't need to write any of this down because I'm going to email it, I'll email it to, uh, to Lena. And I need to work on this further. I want to try and go through all the notes I've made and, and you know, scunge out one or two more things as well. Um, we need to keep in mind what it is that we're doing as we're learning these strategies. Now, I've said it a few times today. At, uh, uh, keep in mind driving a car. I mean, the first time you drive a car, you don't anticipate that there's a car turning right 200 metres down the road and you'll slow down now so that you'll get around that. You're feeling where the brake is. You are, aren't you? So we need to keep in mind, our first goal was to just do the actions. Do them, we need to do them with thought, putting thought into them, they weren't automatic, putting thought into them, and we did them sometimes. And that's how we started. <laughs> just to get the feel for them, just to get them going. And the next challenge was to actually start to do them automatically. So they become part of our repertoire. A, th a third aspect is knowing when to use them. And, that, and that's really where we are now with a lot of these, Lena. Knowing... Oh, I've lost them, haven't I? Yeah, I Isn't she sad? Um... Where have they gone? <laughs> and under time. Yeah. So, 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 okay, well, I'll, I'll be very quick. Anyway, <laughs> we've just got to keep this in mind. And because we don't want staff just to be doing them all the time, seeing that they don't work some of the time, not being strategic about using them, and saying, okay, that was another thing that we tried for a while, it doesn't work. Because they will work. With the, with the competing demands on teachers' time and effort, this is a real issue for us. There are new things happening. So a few people have mentioned E to the 5. Where does E5 fit in with all this? In fact, I believe that E5 is totally consistent with the strategies. But remember, E5 is a model of instruction. We're on about learning. And so what I've tried to do in one of the documents, I've, I've, I've got E5. And I've shown how it comes up, how we deal with it and getting knowledge ready or, or whatever. So with the dem competing demands on teachers, if my whole focus is on how I'm going to have the children thinking about the ideas that they're learning, all of those competing demands should slot into that. 
my key focus as a teacher, and some people have said today, our core work is for the children to learn, change their knowledge. And so even though people are saying, you've got to do this, you've got to do it, I've got all those things, the question I would ask is, if I'm teaching about earthworms next week, where does E5 fit in? Where does the elaborate fit in? What are the other ones? Where does... Okay. Anyway, okay, engage, whatever. Where do they fit in? Now, the next one, when modelling any strategy at all, I do think we need to make the actions as clear as possible. We're now moving into the more difficult strategies, summarising, paraphrasing, visualising, those sorts of things. I couldn't teach them without having the text projected onto here and for me to do the underlining. Remember I said earlier today, the kids read the first sentence about caterpillars hatching in, in eggs. They read the third sentence, caterpillars hatching in eggs. We drew a little picture there because that's what they told me, a little picture there, hey, they're the same. And I, when I was teaching those kids a, a tool of arm to summarise, I could cross out they could see me cross out some of the senses. When we were doing paraphrasing, I could write above them. I could, we could circle the verb first. Then we could take those and put in a, a synonym for those and a synonym for those. The kids need to see that. 